Hi. You know, I must be getting close to my going home time. My great send-off. My long-awaited send-off. Because every time I pick up this interest, this moment, such as this moment, and try to say something to you, I feel myself bolder and bolder each time. And I can't help it because what I'm sharing with you is so essential. It is essential for your freedom. It is essential for your liberation. You see, I want you to save your life. You others have said that they want you to save your soul. God wants you to save your soul. And they're trying to help you save your soul. And that's fine with me. But I am also reaching out to excite you in a way by giving you new information that would push you to make a change and start dictating what happens in your life to the extent that it is the best that it can be. And I have a message to tell you that would aid it in becoming better than it has been by following the rules of everybody else, by following the counsel of everybody else. That doesn't mean that you haven't found some that were good. It has always been a stepping stone. And I'm not trying to put that down because most of you, practically everybody that will come along, had to walk this way before they could get up the road. You know what I mean? So this is not a put down. But I want you to understand where I'm coming from and why. You see, I'm a church man because to me, a church man is a man who knows God, who knows who he is in God and knows what he is in society, knows his purpose in society and is about the business of doing it. That's a church person, a church person, being what and whom and to what you were made to be. And the rewards are always there from the beginning because you're free free. And so when I say that I don't see God in the same light that you do, what I see God as far as the world and the church outside of this way is like I want to use you for an example. The church and your presentation comes in two forms. One is in symbolism, going to a building, having a sermon, going through the rituals. I'm not going to try to say it because it might sound like I'm trying to put it down, but I'm not. But you're going through what you go through. And then you leave the church. And for most of you, it's a different presentation. And I am not trying to focus on any people specifically outside of the collective body. And that is, I see God in you who profess to be a child of God. I see God. I hear you talk about a God. I hear you read about a God. I hear people talking about what somebody has said about a God. And I hear people professing and claiming that they are worn with that. And yet, I see a different picture. So what I see is your presentation of your understanding of God. So I look like a nut sitting up listening to somebody preaching about something down yonder. In other words, why not get further on up the road? Further on up the road. Well, the reason that you can't get further up the road is because 
you don't know God for yourself. Now, that might sound something that you don't want to hear. But I must say it. That means you don't know God. You're following traditions. You're following, and some of you who at one time did all kinds of things and you don't do it now and you want to act like you've grown spiritually. <laughs> thing is you done got too old and you look silly and stupid doing it and you know it. Some of you have grown and matured and recognized that what you thought you knew was some junk and now you're wiser. But at the same time, when it comes to God and your representation of God, I see it in you. And the God that I'm following is further on up the road than the God you're showing. You see, the God that I'm trying to tell you about is the God that created you. The God that I want you to understand wants you to have peace. And the way to peace is, is justice. Wants you, in fact, the way to all of the things that you would desire in life follows on your expression and your commitment to the second commandment. The second commandment of God. I was thinking earlier today the second amendment of the Constitution of the United States is about firearms and the right to possess them. Firearms, to be an aggressor and take something from someone who might, for one reason or another, allow you to do it simply because you got the gun. And then someone else who has the gun to protect what they got. And they respect what they have to such a degree that they can continue to be divided. Well, the God that I represent isn't caught up in that. The God that I represent knows and wants you to know that if you treat others like you want to be treated and you want your dreams to come true and the surest way that you can be empowered to do that is to protect each other's back, guarantee to let no forces come against anything that would rob them of their dream. This means they're protecting your back, you're protecting everybody's back is protected. No con artist, no liar, no thief, no anything that you want to look to as being negative can come upon it. Why? Because it is protected. It is protected. And that is God in action. Way better than that stuff y'all go to church to hear every Sunday. But for some strange reason, you've heard what you have heard for so long. And you're caught up in it. And you're afraid to say you're a Christian and act different than what everybody else is doing. That's why I say you don't know God. See, if you knew God, you would know the light. And you would switch. Those of you who studied Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ was representing who? His father. And no one was acting like Jesus Christ. No one. He wasn't trying to be like somebody else. His message to all of us who have heard that story is that we must be what we've been made to be. And we'll know when we're at that because we will be at peace. We will have that stress gone away from us. And we would be working to see that that which we dream of, which we are proud of because it includes all of you, is manifest. Now, when I talk to you about stuff like this, we live in a world where you don't talk like this. You don't think like this. And nobody talks to you like this. Don't nobody talk to you like this. Your organization of people, the NAACP for you are black, and all of the white organizations that or some of themselves for things such as this. Nobody talks about this stuff. You are bought into the system like everybody else in the world have bought into their system. And you know what? I'm going to say this and I hope I can say it in a minute. Know who you are. And if you don't know, try hard. Try hard. Try hard, it might not be easy for some of you. I mean, you might 
give up and all that kind of stuff. But try hard. And if you want to really know, change your heart. Change your heart. And when you try, it won't be that hard. Change your heart. And once you know, you see, and you see people losing their homes, you see people prostituting, selling drugs, breaking the law, going against the grain, you see people poor, you see people, that stuff drives you crazy. And you don't do nothing about it. The only peace you're going to have is when you try to do something about it. When you give it all you got to do something about it. To teach the world the way to be. When you give it all you got, then peace and joy going to come to you. You might not because the people are so caught up in what they're caught up in. We might not, you might not get a chance to see what you're trying to achieve happen. But that's not your fault. You're not even looking at, you wish you could see it, you hope you can see it, but you're not looking at that. You're looking at your role in the process of the here and now. Are you a part of the problem or are you of the solution? That's all I'm talking to you about. I'm going to let you go. Bye-bye.